Hey, everybody. Dr. Robin McKay here. Welcome to our Tuesday morning meeting. It's been a little while since I've been on LinkedIn Live, and I'm so happy to be with you here, whether you're joining me live. And if you are, by the way, say hello in the comments so I can say hi back. And if you are watching the recording, please let me know that as well. I love to come back in here and see what you're taking away from this and see what... Um, how this, how this information is affecting you and how you're thinking about this very important topic today. This is going to be a powerful training that we have today. And it's one that if you allow it to, is going to shift your perspective on this very challenging time that a lot of our colleagues, perhaps even you personally, are experiencing in the tech space. And of course, I'm talking about all of the layoffs and the reductions in force and people losing their jobs during this time not through their necessarily their choice, but uh, sometimes it's just a numbers game and sometimes it's not personal, but it feels very personal. And so I wanted to come in here because as you know, if you've been in my world for a while, I'm an award-winning psychologist. I'm an executive coach to Fortune 500 leaders, especially women leaders and neurodiverse leaders in tech, healthcare, and entrepreneurship. And I'm a keynote speaker as well. And for, of course, because I work with you all, I've been having a lot of conversations behind the scenes on what's going on in the tech space, which is why I decided to do this training. I was walking Cooper, my golden doodle this morning, and it occurred to me that I wanted to um, share this with you. If you look back over the last couple of years, we've seen some, I'll call them trends. I don't want to take that lightly, but this is, this is kind of how I was shown it this morning. The first trend that we saw in the corporate space was the great resignation. Do y'all remember that? The great resignation where people were having existential crises, walking away from their corporate positions, maybe finding jobs in other industries that were more aligned to their values and to what they held precious and dear. Some of them were making the leap into corporate consulting or a consulting and entrepreneurship space to follow their entrepreneurial dreams. So that was the first phase. That was the great resignation. Know what came next? It's still kind of, if you look at the, what's trending, you'll still see this a little bit. You'll still see you talk about the quiet quitting. And whether people are actually quitting their jobs or not, they're ending their jobs on time. They're not logging in at night. They're doing just kind of the what's expected of them and not going above and beyond so that they're able to have kind of more of a work-life balance. They're able to do some of the things in their lives that they've, they've wanted to do, but have felt like they couldn't because they were overly committed to their careers. So quiet quitting came next. Now we've got what I'm calling the tsunami of layoffs and reductions in force that are sweeping through particularly the tech space. And while the first two trends that I observed were largely driven by the individual, so there were individual people making choices to leave corporate, to leave their positions, to find positions in other more aligned organizations. During quiet quitting, there were individuals who are deciding to close down their laptops at exactly five o'clock and not reopen them until the next day. But this one, this one is not driven by the individual, is it? It's driven by the organizations. So it has a very different feel to it. And that's what I want to talk about today. Specifically, I want to talk about the psychology of layoffs and reductions in force. Whether this has happened to you personally, you've, you've been somebody who has been laid off recently. And if you have, um, I'm glad that you're here. I really am glad that you're here with me. If you are somebody who has had the untenable position sometimes of having to deliver the information, deliver the news that your colleagues or your, your team members have been laid off. If you are somebody who is, has, I'm going to use air quotes here, but survived the layoffs and you're grateful and thankful to have your position still. It really, this is for all of you. Because the psychology behind what's going on right now in the tech space is something that can rattle you down to your core. And you know what I, listen, if you've been around me for a while now, you know, I'll say that there's always going to be somebody who has 
their situation may be worse than yours. You know, you can look at your life and you can say, I didn't lose my job. I kept my job. I'm grateful to be here. And you can say, and I shouldn't feel guilty. I shouldn't feel sad. I shouldn't feel scared because there are people who have actually lost their jobs and who are in a very different position than I am. So what I would caution you here is that we're going to just take a really objective, loving, kind perspective on this whole strata of ways that people are affected by this time in, in the tech space with all of the layoffs. So here's, here's what I want to do. I want to drop in. I've got some notes here. So bear with me. And if something, by the way, if you have a question, if something comes up for you that you want me to specifically address, you can type those into the comments as well. And I'll try to get to them during this training. If I can't, I'll come back in and do a part two and even a part three if we, if we need to do that. But here's what I want us to get is that when our jobs are somehow threatened, whether it's you've actually lost your job or you're somebody who's watching your colleagues be let go one by one and you're kind of the lone survivor, that can actually rattle us at our very core. It rattles our sense of security, our sense of safety, our sense of self-worth, our sense of deservedness. It really rattles the, the basic needs of our human experience, the need to be safe, the need to be secure, the need to be able to take care of our families, the need to have money coming in in order to pay our bills. All of those are very basic levels of Maslow's hierarchy, hierarchy of needs. So regardless of what your actual experience is, one of the things I want to bring forward is during times like this, one of the big questions that people are asking unconsciously sometimes, sometimes they'll be able to answer this or ask this consciously, but for the most part, it's an unconscious question. One of those questions, is everything going to be okay? Is everything going to be okay? And the second question is, am I going to be okay? So I just want us to hang there for just a second. You've heard me in the past talk about toxic positivity and I am not advocating nor am I going to, you know, pat you on the back and say, everything's going to be, and of course, you're going to be okay. Now is not the time or the place to do that. But now is the time and the place to get really curious about the emotions that you're having about your experience and to process your emotions as they come forward. In other words, let's adopt the attitude of curiosity, open-heartedness, open-mindedness, about the experience that, that you're having around what's going on in your, in your company as best you can. You're going to experience anything from shock to anxiety, to worry, to fear. You're going to have the experience of not being able to focus, of wanting to get some work done, but being distracted by emails coming in about who's, who else is leaving your team being distracted by the possibility that you might get a meeting notification and you know what's coming next. So there are all of these moments throughout your day, throughout the week, throughout the month, where there's a constant vigilance about your moment to moment experience and you feel yourself guarding against it. And that's to be expected. So I'm sharing this with you because I want you to, as best you can, not make yourself wrong for having your experience. Just allow yourself to have the experience without judging it, without having an attitude about it. Just let yourself have the experience. Be curious about it. And you can actually start, if you want to start taking notes about that experience, you can say, I noticed in this moment when I saw an email come through that I felt a rising up of anxiety. Okay, that's a good observation. And it's also an observation that you can make and then take the opportunity to just breathe, to reconnect yourself with your surroundings. Because here's the thing, 
When I said that layoffs rattle your sense of safety and security, what ends up happening a lot, not always, but a lot, is it actually evokes a trauma response. Now, you may not have had a previous trauma around losing your job, but maybe your dad did or your mom. Maybe you've gone through another round of layoffs and you were the one who had to deliver the, the news to your teammates. Those are all certainly circumstances that would create trauma in the brain. So when an experience comes close to that trauma, reminds you of that trauma, the same regions of the brain, the same neural pathways in the brain actually are activated. So of course you're going to have some kind of trauma response to the circumstances that you're in. And there are four major ways that trauma presents itself. You know most of them, fight, flight, freeze. I freeze up, I don't know what to do next and fawn. And fawn is something that is kind of new on the scene in terms of understanding trauma response, at least more widely, where you're actually sort of being in that place of, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful that I even have a job. Oh my gosh, I'm so, what can I do to ensure that I continue to have a job? It's an, it's an appropriate to be expected response, by the way, so don't make yourself wrong if you're having that response. I just want to bring it to your attention that trauma responses are often the case, whether or not you're the person being laid off. There's genetic, generational, societal, and cultural influences that affect your physical body, the cellular memory of your physical body when it comes to these circumstances. So the invitation here is to notice if I'm having a trauma response and then to engage my intellect, to engage my conscious mind and say, okay, so if this is a trauma response, what's my best way through it? So first you become aware of it and then you can start to recognize what the best way is to manage the trauma response and perhaps even at some point heal it. Some of the other, I'm going to call them, they're not necessarily symptoms. I'm going to call them experiences that you might have during this period of layoffs is either, like if you've had the experience of being laid off, you might have the experience of shame, embarrassment, making yourself wrong. If only, and looking back at your your tenure at that organization and looking back at the regrets that you have, the things that you believe you should have done. And if only you would have done those things, you might still have that job. Um, in some ways, I think that there's value in doing that, but it, there's not a whole lot of value in continuing to ruminate on that or to continuing to allow yourself to sort of steep in the emotion of shame or embarrassment. So this is where you have an opportunity to ask for support from a team member, from a professional, a, a coach or a therapist to work through some of those deeper seated emotions and trauma responses. If you haven't lost your job, but you've got colleagues who have, you might be experiencing survivor guilt. And I, I can hear you. Part of you might be saying, well, Robin, come on. Nobody died. Why am I experiencing survivor guilt? But again, I want us to go back to layoffs affect the foundations of our sense of safety and security. And so when you have colleagues around you who are being let go, whose sense of safety and security is actually being affected, you can have a response of what made me so different? Why am I here and they're not? And it can actually, the, the um, survivor guilt can actually throw you into an existential conundrum, if not crisis. I know, isn't this such a, this is not an uplifting conversation but it is meant to be a powerful one. It is meant to be one to really be paying attention to what your actual experience is because that's where your resilience can kick in. 
It's not to be in denial of your emotional journey during this time at all. In fact, it's to fully examine the emotional journey, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's painful, and even if other people are choosing not to. This is your opportunity to look at yourself, to look at your lived experience, and to take some deep breaths. And at some point, you will be able to reassure yourself, maybe from past experiences. I had a client who had the experience of losing his job. And his attitude was, I always land on my feet. I always land on my feet. His attitude and mindset was, of course, I'm going to be more than okay. Of course, this is an opportunity for me to pursue something that I've always wanted to pursue that perhaps I wasn't able to because of the commitments that I had. There are going to be people for whom it is easier for them to turn their attention to what's positive and right about this experience of layoffs, much like those who left the organization during the great resignation or even during the quiet quitting phase when they started pursuing other interests. That is probably the most empowered position that you can put yourself in regardless of where you're sitting right now. If you've lost your job, once you address the trauma, the traumatic experience that you've had and move through that, you can start to see a different perspective. And you can even actually start to see the different perspective even as you're moving through the trauma. Perhaps this time that we're spending today is supporting you in that. It certainly is meant to. This is also an opportunity for you to remember your strengths and to draw on them. To look at what's right with you to look at what's right with your life and to know that you have the intellectual resources and the creative capacity to be able to, I'm going to use the phrase outcreate whatever circumstances you find yourself in. If you are truly an innovator in your heart, there is a way for you to innovate yourself out of this place that you're in right now. In the most easy, joyful, miraculous way, that you could have ever hoped for or imagined actually. But it's not an immediate turnaround, is it? Because these the times like this create the conditions for us to re-examine our lives. And that re-examination can actually promote what I call the ex existential conundrum. It doesn't always rise to the level of crisis, although it could. And certainly existential anxiety and depression rise up with that. What is the purpose of my life? If not this, then what? It's actually, I believe, a calling of your soul to come into what you're really meant to be doing. And perhaps when you're ready and when it's time, you can take a look at any signals or red flags that came from inside of you about that it was time for you to leave. And this, it... Really, at this point, it, it doesn't matter if you're still sitting in your, in your position at your organization and watching people be laid off or you've been laid off yourself. It really is an opportunity or a portal into something new. The great unknown. But that's the challenge, isn't it? Uncertainty is a very challenging place to sit in uncertainty, wanting to know that everything's going to be all right, wanting to know that I'm going to be all right, but having an uncertain future can be, can be sometimes terrifying even. So I want to acknowledge that. However, I do want to offer some hope. I do want to offer some recommendations and tools on how to navigate this time. I mentioned some of them already, 
but we reached a point that I want to just share with you some of my best recommendations. And I do want to say this, stay, stay here with me until the end, because if you're feeling called to have a private conversation with me, there's going to be a way that you can work with me more deeply on this. I'm available for that. Or if you want me to come in and talk with your teams or your colleagues about this situation that you find yourselves in, there will be a way for you to do that as well. So here are a couple of things. Number one, again, I want you to, as best you can, approach this with curiosity, with fascination, with wonderment. These are the mindsets and the attitudes and the perspectives of the innovative. And even you can approach that, that rising up of anxiety, worry, fear, the trauma response with that same level of curiosity, just by saying, I wonder, I wonder about that. So the Buddhist philosophy will talk about the objective, objective of observer, that mindful perspective where you have an open heart, where you're non-judgmental, where you're curious, and you're just allowing the experience to be what it is without judgment. That's a challenging place to be. And hopefully you've got a mindfulness practice already going so that this is not your first time of ob objectively ob observing your life. That does not by the me way mean check out from your life. It just means observe it without absorbing it and without making it mean something other than just what is unfolding in front of you. So practice curiosity and give yourself some time to do that. The second piece of advice that I want to give you today is to take care of your nervous system. When your nervous system is running hot, when you're in a trauma response, when you're in anxiety, when you're in worry, when you're in constant distraction, the nervous system is going to be jumping all over the place, making it difficult for you to focus, making it more likely that you're going to have some emotional reactions to situations immediately. Um, so I want you to take care of your nervous system. You can do that by making sure that you're staying hydrated. So drinking even more water than is probably recommended by whoever is recommending those things is, these days. Um, make sure your electrolytes are in balance. Give your nervous system the support that it's asking for so it can be of service to you. The best way of allowing the nervous system to be of service to you is to make sure that it's hydrated, that there are plenty of electrolytes on board, and that you're practicing some form of active meditation, whether it's sitting meditation and focusing on your breath or moving meditation, like going out for a walk, paying attention to every footstep but staying as present as you possibly can from moment to moment, right? So that supports the nervous system. And third is this one. And this is specifically for those of you who are directly affected by the layoffs. I want you to really, as best you can, don't isolate or hide. The emotion of shame is one that would invite isolating and hiding that would invite or insist on disconnection. But what your spirit is asking for is connection. Your spirit is asking for linking arms, not for somebody to rescue you, because you know that you have it within you to find your way out of this, but you are not meant to do this by yourself. You are meant to link arms. You're meant to use the resources that the organization has put forward to you in terms of rejobbing in terms of next steps. You are meant to re-engage with the world as soon as possible. So as best you can, don't isolate. Have conversations with your colleagues. Again, not asking them to fix anything for you. I don't think that a lot of you need something fixed necessarily, but just to be able to make contact with somebody eye to eye and heart to heart. That's what's required here. And for those of you who have colleagues who are reaching out to you because they've lost their jobs. Your job is not to be a life raft for them. Your job is not to pat them on the back and say, everything's going to be okay. Your job is just to be present with them. To demonstrate profound empathy, not by problem solving, but simply with your presence. So those are my three recommendations. I hope that you have found this helpful. 
if you have, I would love for you to do a couple of things. One is to leave a comment and tell me what your takeaways are. The second is if there is somebody in your life who you know who can benefit from this, please share this information with them. And then the third thing is this. If you would like me to come in and talk with your team, talk with your colleagues about this perspective on this tsunami of layoffs that we're experiencing, you can reach out to me and I'll put the, the link in the comments as well to book a call. And if you would like to chat with me about working with me privately to process through your own experience around either survivor's guilt or around what's next for me, you can do that as well. I would welcome that. So the way that you start that conversation is you book a call, you go to my website, drrobinmckay.com forward slash call, and you get on my calendar. And that's how we start the conversation about what's next, either for me to come into your organization and have the conversations or to work with me privately. Just let me know. And I will look forward to talking with you about how I can continue to support you in this. All right. So until next time, Dr. Robin McKay here, and I will see you on another video.